Hey guys, this is Shane and welcome to my Curator of the Lost channel. And today we're going to talk about what are the parts and of a book and what are their names. And the reason this could be important is when, if, if you're working with other sellers and you're trying to communicate, having a common language where you, a very explicit language where you, you know what each other are talking about, especially with regard to condition. And also as a seller, if you're, your buyers, if you describe things with this language and these words, it's, it's very exact and combined with your photographs, there's, it really eliminates confusion, potential points of contention, and allows you to really describe your books in an authentic and meaningful way. So, uh, hey, I look forward to you uh, subscribing, uh, some comments, see what you think, and uh, you might have some different words than, uh, than, than I'm using, so it'd be interesting to see. So with that, let's jump right in. So in a book, you, you first off, you have the book itself, and you have the dust jacket, okay? Um, the dust jacket is, is characterized by the front face or the front panel and the rear face or rear panel, okay? Then you have the spine, you have the front flap, you have the rear flap. Then these, these little parts that wrap around here that transition from the front panel to the front flap and the back panel to the back flap, are they refer to as the wraps. Sometimes they're called the turn, okay? So it's just that little bit that allows it to turn. Now, why would that be important? Let's say I'm price clipped. I could say that my front flap is price clipped. They know that it, exactly that it's here. It wouldn't be clipped anywhere else. Or if there was writing, you'd say it's on the front flap. Uh, if you had a tear, you could explain it. So pretty straightforward on the dust jacket. So now let's move to the book itself. A few more parts to the book. All right, hardback book, just took the dust jacket off. So first off you have the cover. You have the, the, the front cover or front board. Then you have the back cover or back board. Straightforward. And just like with the dust jacket, you have the spine of the dust jacket, okay? Now the top, Part of the book. The top edge here of the book is called the head. All this, this whole, this whole edge here is called the head. This, the part that's opposite of the spine is called the fore edge. Okay. And then the bottom of the book is called the tail. So the head, the fore edge, and the tail. So if you had writing, you could say, I have, you know, writing on you might say top edge, but you could say writing on the, the head or on the fore edge of the book. A lot of times where people would put their names, like for a textbook. Um, if you're looking at the spine itself, since this is the head, this little area around the top here is called the head cap. So sometimes you can get damage there that sort of gets pulled away. That's nice to mention. S same way, you have the tail cap. Okay, maybe this one has a little dent right there on the tail cap. Maybe I want to call it out. Um, and then some books, this one you can't really see it, but some books have a colored ribbon. It's where they, they, they make the binding. That ribbon is called the headband on the top part and the tail band on the bottom part. I think that's important because sometimes on books, especially really thick books, you can get a separation at the, like this one's really nice there, but sometimes you can get a separation where the headband separates or the head cap separates on, on the spine. So you can very explicitly use that language to describe that effect, okay? Um, this, where the cover opens, see where it creases right there? On the outside, that is called the joint, all right? Sometimes you have books that get split right there. So you can say it's split at the joint. Um, obviously you can describe corners of the book, and one that's kind of esoteric, I don't know that any reason you need to know it other than just knowing it. You see on the, the, the part of the cover that goes above the pages, just that little bit there, it's on both sides, but that's called the square. Go figure. Got a name for everything on a book. All right, so now let's open it up. Uh, when I open it up, the first thing I see is this interior seam. Okay, on the outside, we call it the joint, okay? 
But on the inside, we call that the hinge. It'd be on the front hinge and the back hinge. This is really important because like, here's an example of a book that I just listed, a, a 1916 genealogy book. And the rear of the book is split right there. So I can describe that as the back hinge is weak or broken. And that very explicitly describes what's going on there. No ambiguity. So that's, that's one example. All right, so back into the front, the front of our example book here. So the joints on this side, the hinges on this side. These two blank pages, it's when they, they build the book, they have this blank page and it actually gets glued to the board. And there's one on the front and you get the same thing on the back, you know, if you look at the construction. All right, so these are called the end sheets. All right, the end papers are the end sheets. Almost every hardback book is going to be like this. The part that's glued to the cover, that's pasted to the cover, is called the paste down. So this is the front paste down end sheet or, or end paper, front paste down. This would be the free end sheet. Now, because it's not pasted. Um, now, some, some people would, might call this a flyleaf. Since it's this first page, I still call this a, um, I would call this an end sheet and not a flyleaf. Some books will have a, additional blank pages in here to protect the title page. Maybe the book binders needed it to make things come out even. Um, sometimes you'll even see them on the, the back of a book. Here's a good example. So we had, you know, there's the, the end sheet, the, the, the rear end sheet that's the paste down and the free. Let's see, here's a page that's a blank page. That's an example of a flyleaf page, okay? Um, when you move past the end sheets and the flyleaf, you're gonna come to title pages. But specifically, if you have the page that only has the title, this is referred to as the half title page. If you notice the title page is the one that has the author, the title, and usually the publisher. This might be important if you have a signature on, on the book and you want to, spe or uh, something that's written, you might want to specify if it's written on the title page or if something is signed or autographed or something on the half title page. And then of course you have the copyright page, which gives you some of the printing history a bit of a whole nother video, but that's where we'll, you can look at some of the print lines. See, there's a one through a 10. So that was a first print. So um, that's a whole nother topic, right? Uh, if we go into the book and you just look at between pages, we would call that the gutter, not to be confused with the hinge or the joint, of course. Uh, and then if we take a single page, that's called a leaf. Single page is a leaf. The left-hand side of the leaf is referred to as the verso, the, uh, I think that's obverse. The right-hand side of the, leaf, of, of the leaf of the page is the recto, I think that's reverse. So you've got a leaf. Now what's interesting too in the construction, just another little tidbit, um, you can sometimes see, I don't know if we can see it here, but sometimes how these things are, the books are built. There's like, you can see little packets of pages that little packet of pages that are kind of done together, one of those little packages is called a signature. So a bunch of the leaves go together or folded together and then put into the book, and that's called a signature, that little s section. Uh, finally, if you just took all of the pages, all of the things that are inside the covers, that whole this whole thing here, this is called the text block or the book block. Maybe not that useful when describing a book, but it's part of the nomenclature and maybe you need to know. So that's all the things about a book. Uh, some other examples. See, like I have this book here. Uh, some these uh, Somebody wrote a memoir on World War and I have my, my end sheets. But then look, I have a uh, fly leaf page and it's signed. So I could say it was signed on the first flyleaf page, autographed by the author. Uh, here's an example, you know, here's a book, uh, Mostly Mississippi. It's got damage here. I, w I might, to be very explicit, I might say that there's, you know, see photograph for damage 
on the, remember, remember this, this is the spine, right? But this top is the head. This was the head cap. So I might explicitly say that there's damage on the, on the spine head cap. So it's right there. And then they can look at the photo and see that. Another example could be, here's a sci-fi book, Jack McDevitt. And look, somebody had their, their library sticker from their, their personal collection stuck on there. So I could say that it's library sticker, ex libris sticker, um, you know, pasted onto the front free end sheet. And, it, you know, even if I forgot to put a photo or I didn't have a photo, they would know that that's what that is. So that's it. That's lots of information on the parts of a book and some examples of how you can use them um, in your descriptions. It's that having that language uh, that we can use to communicate with each other and to be very precise so that there's no misunderstandings, either as if I'm buying book lots with another seller or if I'm selling and I want the buyers to have a really good experience and I want to be very explicit in my, in, in my terminology so that they understand what they're getting as well and there's no surprises. So that's it. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Again, subscribe, give me some comments. Um, you know, there's, there's probably maybe some other terminology there that I didn't pick up, but that's, that's, that's a lot in the big ones and I hope it helps. So with that, have a good one, be safe and have fun. We'll talk to you soon.